Welcome back to the Home Inspection Whisper Show. I brought Steve Breckner, and this is going to be our back. Steve Breckner yep. back. This is like the fifth or sixth time he's been on the episode or show, right? Yeah, show. And this is going to be the first one that we're going to put on uh, YouTube or Facebook where we're going to record it live and then we're just going to go and post it. Probably almost zero editing. I actually don't have to edit our stuff at all, which is really nice. And today's episode, we're going to focus on how to market your home inspection business, but really it kind of applies to everything. It's just I know home inspections is how I market my business. And I know I wrote down like a list of 14, 15 things to really talk about. And then, you know, Steve Rector and I, if we even make it to the bottom of 15, that'll be pretty impressive. <laughs> if um, we make it to the bottom of five, that would be impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to let, he likes, he wants to talk a little bit about his success in his business of where it's going because he kind of goes through the, the coaching of uh, the Home Inspection Whisperer show. And he just wants to talk about where he's at right now. And then we'll dive into the marketing because I know he loves marketing and I do too. It's my favorite part of the job. And uh, so what do you got, Steve? Awesome. So uh, we did have that little law that we were talking about on the last podcast. And that was just because, you know, like we were talking about having a 90 day business and just um, the way things were going before I could never, I couldn't market too much because I was the one answering the phone and doing everything. And it would just get overwhelming. And I had to tell people no, because my schedule is full, which is a great problem to have. But now that we've got Eric, we got, uh, and we're going to be training some other people here soon and starting them off on the right foot with the paperwork and all this stuff that you helped develop um, and starting them, you know, from square one, you know, we'll have more people up and running by the time the super spring market hits middle of March, end of March, maybe the beginning of April. Um, but we had, uh, some breaks in the weather here and I've been marketing super hard since the last podcast. I was kind of freaking out in my own head thinking, you know, I'm not answering my phone between seven and nine and either are they nine o'clock at night. And I did, I do remember getting phone calls between seven and nine for sure. So and you think, well, they're probably just calling somebody else. And then you think to yourself, well, there's, there's hundreds of companies, hundreds of home inspection companies, if not thousands that use ACC and these other call centers. And they're not getting calls between seven and nine either. So don't smash the panic button. Know that that kind of thing, you just have to retrain your agents, retrain train how people call you and just deal with it for a little bit, bear through it, and then just start marketing hard because it all, it all turns around in, in 30, 60 to 90 days. You know, and, and uh, I, I'm glad you brought up the 60 to 90 day time period because at the end of the book traction that I just finished, it says everything always feels like failure in the middle, you know? So in the middle, we've hit this wall and we were like, we're like, Oh no, it, the, we were like, what's going on? But we both felt it. Right. I'm like, Oh man, I've been telling him to do all this stuff. You hit this wall. And then it, that line spoke to me. It was like, everything feels like failure in the middle. I'm like, he's smack dab right in the middle. You know, that's the oh, reason why it, it feels funny. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. it all makes sense. And so that, that's how it goes with Mary and I too. We were like hitting this wall too. And we're just like, wait a minute, we're kind of in the middle, you know, all the stuff's in place. And yeah, so you hit that middle, you're over the middle part. You have your training going really well. You started hitting that marketing and marketing always takes 90 days. So if you market to that person, even with your follow-up that you're doing, it still takes 90 days for them to even get something to give to you. You'll see some definite positive spark just from, from moving forward and just keep putting one foot in front of the other and just keep marketing every single day. You're mm -hmm. going to see some positive feedback and some spark. I mean, I've got a few agents just from Facebook stuff, um, just for my, the way I do my peppering them with my price list and, uh, and when they ask, them, ask me to, to like their page and stuff. And um, kind of like you writing the thank you notes, which I started doing this week. Nice. Nice. Um, I just grabbed some generic ones for now, but I'm getting some custom ones made at Vista Print, and uh, then we'll go from. There. I think it's just the act itself. You know, it it doesn't have to be super fancy. It doesn't have to be super expensive. Uh, I still today want to make a, like a postcard where it's like some funny, where it's just me like James Bond with a thermal imaging camera or something like yeah. that, or just memes. You know, people love memes, and they'll be like, "Oh man, your last one was funny." You know, something like that. So. I, I think, um, yeah, so 
it's the act itself. It's not so much of what's on the card. Just you want to remember that. Yeah, for sure. So this being a marketing podcast, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing we get on the Facebook forums, you and I, oh, yeah. is about marketing. Well, to everyone. I mean, they just put it out to all the groups on all the pages. There's probably five pages in it. Then somebody will pepper it with the exact same post on everyone. And yeah, I'm new. I'm trying to get started. Yeah. What do I do? I'm, the candy's not working. You know, <laughs> all those things we hear. And I, I think what we're going to try to do is to just get people off the candy kick. Right. Yeah. Or uh, we could even talk about it because, you know, I still think it can work. It's just the least effective. You know, that's what I, what it comes it, down it, to. Yeah. It can be a follow up when you're there for sure, but right. don't go there for that. Right. And uh, so I wrote down a list of 15 and then I actually even wrote down like a simple marketing strategy. So if you're new in the business and you make it to the end of the show, or you can just fast forward to the end, you're, you're in charge. What, however, I'm going to talk about uh, how to, I'm going to, I wrote out a marketing strategy for you. So that is the cheapest and it will work because it's how I did it, you know? And I, and I still think this basic strategy, it's a, it's a referral based strategy, not a, um, what I like to call my shotgun strategy, where if you have the money, you know, throw the money at it and eventually in the masses, it will come back. If you don't have the money and you're new, I, I wrote down the cheapest strategy and I still to I'm still upset today that I don't follow it as much as I should. If I followed this same strategy, I'd still, I'd still be pulling in business even better. But um, so make it to the end of the show. I'll give you the strategy. But um, so going back to the top, that is actually number one is dropping off candy. I think most of these programs, they say, yeah, just put your candy in a bowl, put your cards on it, you know, around it, tape it or however you do it. And there, people are going to use your services or throw your cards on that table of cards that uh, real estate agents have, right? And right. I think it's so funny. Uh, there's a post on my Instagram somewhere way, 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 way down. And I took a picture of a table and I counted 16 home inspector cards, different companies' yep. cards, and including mine was on it. But I wanted to- And if you, and if you notice, probably the, the same stack you put there is almost still there and they're barely any gone. The thing is, as technology continues to improve, they rarely have to go to the office, number one. So back in the day when they had to go to the office to do everything, phone calls, use the internet to get their emails, all that stuff before technology, yeah, this was a pretty viable way of doing things in the late 60s, 70s, maybe even you know all through the 80s and stuff. Even 90s. Yeah, yeah. I mean, still, even some of the 90s for sure. Yeah, the 94 when cell phones were got to be started to be prevalent but very expensive. Mm -hmm. They yeah yeah they went to the office all the time. But guess yep. what? They don't do it anymore. Yeah. that's just the, that's just the hub. There's people yeah. I know that have their office like 80 miles away from where they live now because they like that broker and whatnot. So going to that office to market to that agent would be completely useless. Yeah yeah, and so yeah. It was funny. I, I think I brought this story up one of our first podcasts, I think, but about the candy or the, the car, you know, the cards on the table. But I showed up and I was doing my normal marketing where I bring in like some breakfast or something like that. And this strategy that I'm going to give you has nothing to do with bringing in breakfast because you have to have the time to do that. But I brought in breakfast and I like to shake hands you know, uh, take their cards, tell them about my services. But right next to me, I did this on purpose just to see how it would work out. I took the five candy bowls. I left the cards and everything in there and just left them right there next to me. No one looked at them. You know, I was just, just kind of an experiment. Uh, or the, if they did, they took a piece of candy, but they didn't take a card or they didn't even look at the card or they weren't like, oh, this is A-Action's candy bowl. You know, they don't, they don't care. That's just free candy to them. That's all it no. is. And there's, and I go to, even one of my best uh, brokers out there, um, her, my stuff's out of her office and I counted them. And I think only two sheets out of the 50 I gave her, I think, were left the building. I mean, they, they go there and they're in a hurry. Every time they go to the office, if they need to go to the office, they're in a hurry. Time is right. of the essence. They're always busy. They're always running around. They've got an email to send out, an offer to submit, you know, paperwork to get back to somebody, earnest money to get grab, whatever it is. That's not how they run by. They run by that little stand. And and the only time I've ever heard of people saying, "Oh, I got your information from the office." It was we were in a meeting and we were talking about home inspectors, and your name was brought up. 
that's that's the only reason that these other people found them. I'm like, you know, my stuff's sitting in there, right? They're like, send me send me your price list. I'm like, you walk by it every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they don't they don't care. know it's there. So well, they that don't know it's there. The, the I don't least even... effective. So yeah, for all even... you home inspectors out there who think you're going to go buy a bag of Hershey's candy and kickstart a hundred thousand dollar business, just sit around and eat the candy because it's not <laughs> yeah. gonna, it's that's not that's not going to work. And yeah. just dropping your stuff off is really not that effective. No, no, it's if you really have not. You have to put it in their hand, you have to introduce yourself, and then you have to do the follow-up. You know, it's always about the follow-up. They're still not going to remember you, even if you shook their hand, gave them their card. You want their card. You have to take right. their card. and You, you need to card. develop a list. Like, and I got lucky. I've got a, a huge Christmas present. I received all those emails. I've got every email for 9,500 agents. And, <laughs> and, uh, and, and, I, and it's, an amazing, it's an amazing list. And it's already changed because I already know people have changed offices. So right. some of them that had Keller Williams specific emails, those will be no good anymore. Right. So it's going to be an ever evolving list. And, um, and it's, it, it changes hourly probably with as many agents that are in Northeast Ohio. So, you know, it's one of those things that you, you guys have to make sure that if you're going to go to an office and do anything, get to know the front office lady, or if you are really good friends or become friends with the broker and get permission, because uh, I've got permission to go in and physically put anything in their mailboxes I want. So if it goes in their mailbox, they're at least going to have to look at it once to throw it in the trash can. Yeah. So as long as they see it, that's, that's, that's step one. That is effective. Yeah, it's, sure. part, it's part of the strategy of like, you know, circulating. And I like how you brought up the front per desk person. A lot of people ignore the front desk person, but they're the She's most the valuable. Keeper. The gatekeeper. Never eat alone. You know, Never. yeah, that person is the person that will, they talk to agents, 100 agents a day, you know, them coming in and out. And then if you become a, their friend or they know you or, you know, likability, they come in and you're nice to them, guess what? They're, they're, someone's going to be panicking, needing a home inspector, and they're going to be able to be like, oh yeah, this person. And that's where the table of cards come into play. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying this is the least effective. You're not going to go throw your cards on the table and they're not going to be able to use you. But yes, the gatekeeper. I like. Yeah, I've seen order. piles of cards. I've seen trifolds. I've seen not too many price lists, just mine. But they're all still sitting there and they're all big stacks and you know, they, they, the agents just blow right by them. I mean, the, a new agent, somebody new to the office, they may look at it for a minute while they're waiting to go talk to somebody or, or be shown around the office. But then after that, they just, they blow through that front office and sometimes they go in the back. There's always a back door in those, <laughs> those places too. Yeah. They don't they want to hit with all the office. marketing in the front, right? <laughs> it, you're, you're, you're going to get way more bang for your buck doing the same thing. That's always been said throughout history, word of mouth marketing. We'll get it done for you a thousand times over. Um, these agents talking about you for some reason, well, it is the key. Yep. So the next one is uh, gifts. You know, uh, uh, do you think what I've heard is, let me, man, I'm stuttering a little bit, but the strategy of the gifts. So one of my inspectors that work for us, he bought like, I don't know, like a big box of tumblers, you know, Yeti tumbler type things and put his brand across it and just walked into the office and just gave them away, you know? So Ooh, well, those are expensive. <laughs> those are expensive. And he's like, I didn't get one inspection <laughs> off of that. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, because that's a terrible idea. <laughs> you know, like the, if you do do that, it's, you can give it to the person that actually gives you gives business, you business. Yeah. or um, it's about the follow-up, you know, so you met them, you got their card, you, I don't know, go to coffee or something, and then you give it to them. So this person went out of their way to get to you. And then, you know, they, they have some relationship thing. There's a relationship, a bond there where they're like, yeah, I'll carry around your brand. I know you, I took time to meet you. So you can't just Get a big box of gifts and then walk in and just give it away and expect no. something in return. Yeah, they have to be. They have to be for a reason. Uh, and like you said, they have to know you first on that on that level. Like even um, tape measures. There's a lot of people that do tape measures oh, yeah. with a custom sticker on them. I, I mean, I like it. And I know every time people ask me for tape measures, I just I have you know ones they can borrow. But if it's the agent, then I tell my guys go back out to the truck, get the one with the sticker on it. 
and they get to keep it. And it's a, and it's a 25 foot tape measure. So I think um, it's uh, Mike, Michael Marzian, his, uh, his strategy is don't let anyone leave without something in their hand. Right. You know, so right. that follows so I've got highlighters too, that I have my name on. Okay. And agents highlighters are huge because of the contract sign here and they're always using highlighters. So I have found the big super bright uh, highlighters with my stuff uh, put on them. I, th I, th I think it's, it comes out to like, maybe maybe a dollar a piece or 79 cents to find out if they're on sale but those have been huge hits yeah that's, and i that's, and i'm sending one of those out with each uh thank you note so another thing while we talk about you know gifts or all these other items that we're talking about it's it's about a little bit of everything so you're not going to just get business because you have highlighters <laughs> with, your, right. with your name on it or tape measures with your name on it it's just another step in the 90 day process. You're like, Hey, I gave you this and maybe they'll remember you. You know, it's about always being present. Uh, Michael uh, Conrad and I, we, we just talked about that too. And the, in the podcast that's coming out tomorrow, it's just about always being present and that's part of it. So anyway. Oh yeah. I mean, I had access to a hundred agents email boxes at the agency. So where they get their paychecks every Friday. And yeah. I thought for sure a couple of years ago when I started doing these highlighters, I was going to go in there. I was going to attach a highlighter to my price list and my card and put it in there with their paycheck in their, in their pay slot. They were going to pick it up on Friday and I was going to, the phone was going to start just bringing off the hook. This was, <laughs> uh, and I, I keep, I still work with the same three agents and the one broker. That's it. Out of, out of 100. <laughs> so funny. yeah, I mean, even, even giving them a highlighter on their paycheck doesn't help. So. Yeah. So the next uh, thing I have on the list is free services. So, you know, people like to offer free thermal, free termite, free zip levels systems. You know, uh, w what's your opinion on that? You know, do you think that works? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I've definitely toyed around with at least, especially during the slower months, um, doing the free termite like you guys do. Um, I've also thought about maybe, so it's out there as a marketing thing, but it's not all day, every day at every inspection that it could be a hero thing. That's another $65 add on for, for, um, for military veterans, first responders, uh, police and teachers, um, teachers. And it's just one of those things. It's kind of like, uh, seriously, guys, you have to think of this thing as like guerrilla warfare marketing. <laughs> and, uh, and I like to say like, like the mafia, when the mafia is trying to, or even the cartels in Mexico, I was listening to a podcast. So I know this sounds like I'm going off on a weird tangent, but I'm not. <laughs> um, when they, when they want to take over a town, you know, they do use gifts, but they're trying to win over the hearts and minds. So if you can get into some of these ladies, hearts and minds in these offices, it's not that's, just ladies, that's, not, just and ladies. not just ladies. <laughs> There's something yeah, but the guys, the hearts aren't as, as, as soft as the ladies. Sometimes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the guys don't care as much about some of the soft things you do, but um, the hearts and minds of the agents, if you, you know, if you're, because there's a lot of agents out there. Oh, and a couple of them are guys. I have to, I have to say that, that do the hero programs and stuff for the home, for the heroes, homes for heroes things. And if you promote something for heroes, first responders, teachers, all that kind of stuff. I've had a lot of agents that are like, that is, that's really cool that you do that. Nobody else does that. And boom, they, they, they try to use your, at least try to use you a few times. I've been, so, try I've, I've been trying to switch that over. We do do the free termite, but our prices are higher. So technically, you know, free. It's, it, built, in. it's built into the, the price structure a little bit, but I've been trying to convince uh, the other partner, the boss lady about making it free for, you know, heroes, you know, teachers, veterans. And I almost feel like that has a better message than just free in general. Cause right, I think, for sure. I honestly, we've been doing that for seven or eight years now here, and there's still some agents that used us for seven years that still be like, that's free? They'd be like, yes, it's, it's, it's free. <laughs> yeah, yes. they, they forget it's free. You gotta, you, you, that's the other thing. Your marketing has to be steady and consistent. The message has to be consistent. Yes. You can't be free on this one day and then not, and then, you know, well, no, change the prices is all around to try to try to get something going. I mean, I, I know there's, there's guys that hit the panic button because they don't have any money built up when they start these things and they really need to get going. Um, which is part of the reason a lot of them start and fail, especially in like we, we're, we're, our licensing starts in April, but 
right now we've seen a, a big influx of people trying to get in under the grandfathering radar before the licensing you have to before you have to take the national home inspectors exam. Mm. And so, you know, we're seeing an influx of new new businesses in the last year and a half um, of guys doing that. And we see a lot of race to the bottom and that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, so the free stuff does work because a lot of people do use us because it's free. They like the idea that it, they're like, oh, free termite. You know, you don't have to worry about calling another person. That's like the biggest thing. It's not even that it's free. I don't know. I could talk in circles all the day about it, but it does work. It's just make sure your prices, sh- it's built into the prices so you don't suffer for it. So yeah, like, it's, it's always the illusion of free. It's the illusion of free. Yeah. So, but you can market it as it's free and people are like, Oh wow, all of that's included. And you're like, yes, yeah, everything's included. And then they call another company and then they, they add in all these add on services and then they call us and they're like, Oh, that's just included. And you're like, cause there are those price shoppers and they're like, Oh, okay. And then the price is really close, but they like the idea that it's just, like a package deal, you know? And I think at the ISN conference, they were talking about doing package deals, like where people were more likely to purchase the smaller package compared to the, I'm at the middle package compared. So like you could have a service where everything's included and it's like the platinum package and there's this gold package and then this smaller package. But the thing is, is from my experience, whenever you say the stuff is free, it does work out just, Make sure your company doesn't suffer. Right. That was a big uh, loop there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I hope that even makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the last. It won't be the last. Yeah. So the next one on my list of things to talk about here is uh, you're, you've done it a little bit and people always ask me on this one and this one might get us in trouble for talking about it, but warranties, you know, um, you know, <laughs> I know you used to have it and you might, I, you might have taken it out. I can't remember, or you have them, you still offer them. And I actually don't offer them whatsoever. Right. Do you think you had more business? I don't know. It depends on if you took them out or not. Uh, but with warranties, do you, do you think they helped or do you think they helped your marketing? We could do a whole show on this. Um, <laughs> so I started with them about, I want to say three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, just to, cause I thought it was a really good concept. Um, and then the thing is you, you start reading in the forums and talking to people and people didn't understand the marketing behind it. And it's kind of like you with the free termite pest, you can offer these things, but it's, it's hard to get people to want to buy into them. I want to say out of a hundred inspections, since I started doing it differently, one or two people bought into it for $25. I just had them almost cover the cost of it, but not quite. Okay. Yeah. So um, before, so before was, I was, I was paying for it you, out of you pocket bought it every time, every yeah. inspection came with a, the free set of residential warranty services inspections. And it cost me somewhere in the neighborhood, depending on what they were getting somewhere between 16 and $30 an inspection. Ooh, that's, that's expensive. every, every time. And I just, I just racked it up to marketing and that's because I, it was working and I was getting things, a lot of good traction from it. The illusion Um, of working. The illusion of working. No, I was getting some clients and agents and building my business more, but in the end I would tally it up and I was spending 15 to $18,000 a year on the warranties. And when I checked my numbers, only like less than 10%, like 8% of the people that I gave them to did what they were supposed to on their end and signed up online, which took like a minute. I right. mean, we're not even talking about like a long form. They put my name, their name, the address, and I think the the, the date of the inspection. That's it. So that, that's how they activate that they're covered? Yeah. And technically, me going online and putting them in the system covered them. Mm-hmm. Like they, they wouldn't get in trouble for having not signed up. It's not like they weren't going to get coverage because they didn't sign up. If, if I did it, if I didn't do it and they didn't do it, then somebody was going to get in trouble. But Does, doesn't like... ISN and those other services automatically do it for them or do they They might, but I quit before that was the decision I made to stop doing them uh, for free with everybody before I started, right before I started with ACC and ISN. Okay. So so, that was part of me changing my whole life around was to to, uh, 
to stop, stop that. doing that with the warranty so I can afford ACC and ISS. Okay, too. So, so now there's an offer, ACC, they upcharge it for you, right? So, or, or they, not really an upcharge, but they buy it more or less, right? And you say like only a very few people. Yeah, like $100,000 worth of coverage for 25 bucks. Okay, yeah. Whatever and, that is. And, and, and two people out of 100, I think, so far have done it. Okay, and but so whenever you go out and market now, do you still say, "Hey, we offer this"? Do you, I mean, you, yeah, it's it's still there. I still mention it uh, to people, but it's it's slowly falling to the back burner. Like, I okay. it, it could it could not be there, and I probably wouldn't notice, and it would just keep just just go. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of. I, I kind of baited. I, I knew how the you were answer was. Me. <laughs> I, was baiting it. I, knew, I knew it a little bit, you know, <laughs> but it was just that what I'm trying to get at is that is your business increasing or decreasing since you stopped uh, marketing them? It increased actually. Yeah. I, I, I haven't had to, since I haven't been focusing on that and I've just been focusing on relationship just, yeah just relationship marketing social media marketing way more um i mean i could go back to adding that in if i got bored with with some marketing strategies or something and wanted to go back that way and, and touch on it i mean i could always throw it in it's there somebody can get it for 25 bucks but right, yeah. it, i haven't i haven't felt the need to focus on it like i did heavily three years ago right it just i just haven't needed to okay yeah so that's that's pretty cool so the thing is is i've never done it you know at all and this is and as a, i'd say if you first get into the industry i say it's probably a pretty good thing to have like if you don't have a coach or a mentor or someone to fall back on or you're really fresh in the industry i say that stuff's probably a really good idea you're protecting yourself and protecting the clients because you're new you know and then but uh, you know i i've always had like a strong back you know uh, a backbone where People if you write a, if you write a really good report and you make sure you've hit all the important bases in a home when it comes to the attic, the roof, the windows, the foundation, the HVAC, the, the things that they're going to come back and absolutely try to kill you on for a little stuff. Tiny stuff. If you have that stuff covered and you know it was either fine when you were there or you said something about it and said it needed to be further reviewed, um, you're fine. You, you can, you can, you're, you, you're covered. And then also what, what I'm getting at too, is that, you know, it's $25 or up to $30 in inspection, right? So yeah. if you do 400 jobs a year and you put that money aside, just yourself, you're self-insured right. and you are like, don't think you're not, you are eventually going to miss stuff. We miss stuff. And guess what? We go back and we take care of it because I'm not, I don't have to, I don't have to wait on this other third party company to do it. I just turn around. I'm like, yeah, that water heater is pretty messed up. We messed up, you know, and then we just go buy what we have relationships with plumbers. We go out there, they swap it out for us real quick. Boom. You know, everybody's happy and we knock it out. So 100%. I, I mean, so I recently picked up my, my, one of my latest agents that I just picked up. Um, actually we met at a coffee shop. She wanted to interview us. Um, and it went really well. We started working for her. I think in a week we've already done four jobs for her. Oh, nice. Wow. And, yeah. And she, and she does pre-listing inspections for every house she sells. So, oh. and, and for some reason, somehow, like nine out of 10 times, the, the people buying the houses she's listing don't get another home inspection because she leaves your report on the table. It's listed online with the listing. They can go through it. You know, sometimes they might call you with a question, but uh, she does a really good job of that. So, and and compared to most, <laughs> you're trying to get rid of the green screen behind you. <laughs> yeah, like, I noticed that a few here? times. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. but yeah. So the reason that she went away from whoever else she was using, um, they had a problem where they they didn't talk about a rotten. I don't want to say. I don't even want to say the name of the unit. Um, they had this problem with this thing that they didn't say they weren't going to inspect. And it's like in the standard of practice, it says that they send over with the email that, you know, they're not going to inspect it, but you know, the client doesn't read that. And yeah, there's all, all they had to do when they were doing the walkthrough was say, we don't inspect these, make sure you have a look at it if it's important to you, or just take the cover off those two simple little screws and see that it was rotten inside mm -hmm. and just tell the client, Hey, this is rotten. It's not going to be working. It's non-operable and I put the cover back on two seconds, two seconds. 
um, and they didn't do it. And then they just hid behind the standards of practice. Right. Yeah. And so, and so she, she's like, if they would have just said sorry and paid for it, it'd be, you know, worth 40 grand a year to them or more. Yeah. Keep that relationship solid. You know, so think about that guys, when you're out there and you have a problem, depending on who the agent is and everything else, like this woman's worth, you know, 35, $40,000 to somebody a year in business. Right. right. So and then, that, that you got to take care of a $500 problem. Who cares. There's an agent that used us for a long time and we messed up and uh, that we didn't turn, you know, technically, yes, the standards of practices, like the water heater was off. And for whatever reason, I'm a, I turn everything on no matter what. And it was off and he didn't turn it on. And yes, that's technically the rules, but I, I tell them, I'm like, no, you turn it on, but there wasn't any hot water ran to the sink. It was a remodeled home by something and it costs like nine hundred dollars to run pipes because of where the sink was to it and this this agent was you know they use us we i was like hey i i called them and i let them know i'm like hey we messed up yep it's our fault you know we'll take care of it and just went through repiped what we had to got the plumbers out there we fixed it up i think it cost even more than eight hundred or nine hundred dollars but the thing is is that kind of goes back to the warranty services like yes the warranty services would have covered you but you know if i'm paying thirty dollars in the inspection for times two thousand <laughs> that's a shit that's a shit ton of money <laughs> that is the definition of shit ton and yeah. um and even the internet buyback program and stuff i mean i think that costs I, I don't know so anybody out there can chime it's like in five or bucks or something message, like that five or ten something like that yeah. But again, uh, if you were doing it, that'd be ten thousand dollars. Yep, ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I, that's I, a lot of money a year. I think that's actually, especially if you're new, I really think that's a good program. Uh, you see, like the Gramicos help out people, and they—I don't know how many homes they buy back a year. They probably have some sort of t- statistics on it, but like, I think that's actually a really good program if you're new. Because if you're new, you go out and you mess up. I know that's like the way the court system works out that that is if you come out and you say hey i'll buy it back they'd have no case anymore i think that's how that works out so pretty much I th- yeah i think i think that is a good program if you're new <laughs> that's uh, if you don't have the money to go and fight those systems and they don't just buy it back i think they you know they could come on they buy it back go- they fix it they fix whatever the little problem was and then and they they sell it. I, I'm pretty sure he turns around and just sells it for a profit too. Yeah. So <laughs> he, he wins on those. I mean, it's not losing for sure, but, um, and hats off to him for that. I do like that program. But um, so another quick story, kind of like the one I just said, pay the 500 bucks, have the expensive agent still giving you business. Um, this was a marketing story I heard years ago, but um, back in my tuxedo selling days, um, 20, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, um, there was a guy who, they rented tuxedos to other tuxedo stores and this was this is out in your neck of the woods dude this was the the place i had was in oklahoma city um and we would send tuxedos down to texas and kansas and all over the place to these flower shops and these far out locations like out in the panhandle that don't have tuxedo stores and a kid ruined a pair of pants and the owner of the tuxedo company was furious the pants cost 34 dollars to replace Right. They're rental pants. You can yeah. buy them from the people that for $34 and then you rent them out all day for a hundred. Um, <clears throat> he charged the flower shop. I want to say this. Oh, it's a flower shop and men's clothing store way out in the panhandle somewhere. I don't even remember the name of it anymore in Texas. And um, he ended up billing them $150 for the outfit that got ruined, like the whole thing and only the pants were torn and the lady said look if you if you're going to charge me for this outfit i'm never going to use you again Ooh. and and of course he's like nope i'm sticking to my guns you're paying for the pair of pants you know it's ridiculous your client ruined them you should have charged your client bup, bup, bup. and uh she was worth a hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year <laughs> in tuxedo rentals just take the loss. over a 34 dollar pair of pants yeah you could ruin one every week for me i don't care that would, that would make no difference whatsoever to me. Yeah. So that, the guy lost it. And then, so if you take 130,000 times in the last 20 years that she's still been in business, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, lost millions, you lost millions of dollars over a $34 pair of pants. Don't do that guys. Yeah. And then back to the story about replacing the pipe though. Um, 
that agent still uses us today. You know, so they know that we believe in our product and we stand behind our product. And if we mess up, we mess up and we just go and take care of it. You know, right. so it's, it's part of the game, you know, so, so just, if you're in the business, that $500 you make, that $500 is not all your money. You know, you need to set that money aside for insurance purposes, you know, taxes. <laughs> tis the season right now. Taxes. Yeah, de def definitely taxes. All right. So <laughs> moving on to the next one I got down on the list. We made it to six. So further than we thought, mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually don't have a clock on, so I don't know how long we've been doing this. <laughs> so we got six sponsoring team meetings. And I think this is a, a really good, really good strategy in my opinion. Uh, and, but this is, it can maybe, be as long as you're not just, paying money for your name to be on a folder or a flyer and you're not going to be there doing anything or talking uh, or if they just want you to pay for the lunch but not be there it, just paying for stuff guys is, is you, you disappear into the background of anything they're doing yep. make sure you, you I mean, if you're going to go to an office have a big banner you can have in the corner while you're there uh price sheets um. I do need to get business a business card. Yeah, you I've do. Been, uh, I've been wanting a banner forever and I still have not done that. But Mary, uh, Mary, if you're listening, give Chris <laughs> a banner, please. <laughs> he needs one of those really good little banner systems that you know, pop up tent looking ones. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everyone has banners. I don't, I don't you know what, one. when we're, when we're in new Orleans, we'll look at some of those promotional things they've got behind there and you can pick one out and just say, Mary, that's the one I want. Do, are they selling there? Do they sell? No, there? but there's there's going to be guys there with those. Oh yeah, I just and, need to uh, figure out which yeah, one's the best and ask them where the they get. People are using. There's yeah. going to be guys with these things in the background. You're gonna and you're gonna pick one out and you're gonna say, "Mary, this is what I want." This is what I. This is what. Yeah, we need it for not just the home inspection whisperer, but we need it for the home inspection business. So I get to buy two. Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah so, <laughs> Mary's so, cringing right now. Yeah, but you hit it right on the the button a, a bit there. You said, um, you know, you're not just buying lunch and that's where a lot of people they come to me they're like well i bought them lunch i spent 200 or 300 dollars to buy lunch and i didn't get one thing out of it well number one going back to the beginning of the show it takes 90 days it takes 90 days for the business to turn around and come back to you but also it's in the follow-up so you do your five minute speech the five minute speech can you know, do your elevator pitch that you've gotten down perfect. And then you have some sort of giveaway and the giveaway doesn't have to be expensive. We used to give away like expensive gift cards up, you know, but now we literally say, we're going to buy you a cup of coffee, five bucks, you know, $10. They don't care. And your goal is to, I think we do $10. I, I need to go back and look two cups of coffee. Yeah, we do two cups of coffee, one for you and your client. And um, your goal is to get the cards and then you do it. It's the follow-up. It's the emails. It's the phone calls. It's the meet and greets. You want to follow up with all of these agents. To, yeah, and the say, drip campaign of sorts. Yeah, you bring in the strip campaign. So of course it didn't work if you just go up there and say, I just said, hey, I'm Chris Murphy and I do home inspections, blah, blah, blah. They're not I, gonna, bought eight, I bought eight pizzas. Yeah. <laughs> who cares that you bought eight pizzas that, <laughs> yeah. that box got flipped open that you put your front your flyer on they flipped the lid open and they never yeah. saw it yeah uh, yeah I mean, you have to go there and you have to have a little bit more of a thumb on the control of what's going on of how they're going to be dealing with you make sure you're getting some time for it don't just buy something and let it just go right they yeah. don't care who bought lunch yeah the title yeah. companies and other other people buy stuff for them all the time they did they they barely think about it. Right. Yeah, um, that, it works great for title and lending. So, so get that elevator spit, uh, speech down. But even if it's not perfect, you <laughs> make fun of yourself. You know, it doesn't matter. And it's in the follow up. So, you, where the goal is. Make it is meaningful, the, too. I mean, right. just having an elevator pitch about, I'm a great home inspector. I show up on time. I do a good job for my client, yada, yada. They're like, <laughs> they just, they're, you're going to, they, they hear that all day, every day from every home inspector. Oh, we all say we do a good job. We all say we show up early. Yeah. We all say we, you know, give them something they can chew on. Right. Give them some really cool thing about how to make their lives easier. Keep something off the ROC, um, you know, and then say next time you're with a client, you guys, are, you know, have coffee on us and yeah. we hope to see you at your next inspection. Yeah. And yeah, so follow up and what I've given up recently or not given 
during my elevator speeches is I've been, uh, I always like to give them some facts. So home facts would be like, you know, a lot of people think foundations are the number one problem in Houston, but it's actually the galvanized water lines and everyone's eyes are like, what? You know, like, and then another one I like to do is I haven't done it too much. I need it because Mary's taken over it, but uh, this year I'm going to be going back in the field more on marketing. Uh, the face-to-face marketing is, um, we do the uh, funny story at the beginning. The funny story at the beginning is really good. I always like to tell the raccoon story. So, um, man, this green screen, it's going to, it's going to be the death of me. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, the, the funny story, but it, all right. So we hit that. The, so that leads into the next thing is the co- the follow up, the coffee, lunch, and dinners. So, you actually even have to have a follow up after the coffee, lunch, and dinners too. It's not just, you know, you have no, a follow up. It's a physical drip campaign. Yeah. So it's okay. yeah. So there's social media drip campaigns. There's email campaigns. There's physical campaigns. Yep. Yep. So yeah, they're like, well, I think someone I talked to recently, they use what is that thing called, Home Advisor or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah, oh, Home Advisor. <laughs> we could talk about that all day too. But like the uh, the, the Home Advisor, you go to. But the coffee, lunches, and dinners, you know, how much is a cup of coffee for you two? Like $10, you know, you sit there, you talk just for a little bit. And coffee, I think, is the best. It's because there's a time limit on it. You know, it's, there's not very, you, you can only have so much coffee, right, <laughs> in, in one sitting. Or, but lunches could be a little bit longer than you're kind of at the whim of the service and dinners you know, that better be a really good client that you have a relationship with sure. or have some really good contacts. But you you even have a follow-up with this stuff too as well. So you you bought this person coffee, you write them a thank you note for taking the time to do it. You get them in the email campaign and get them on your social media campaign too as well. So it's not just, hey, I had coffee with this person. I bought it for them. They're going to forget who you are probably in two days, you know, you have to make sure that you're always in front of them with the make they get into your marketing campaigns. Yeah, and the more constant it is, because you know, home inspectors, there's there's issues with us and agents all the time throughout a year. So your job is to have enough constant contact with these agents that when they have a problem and they're because you know, if they have a problem and they're frustrated with somebody, if it blows over and they don't talk to anybody else new or get somebody else that suggests another home inspector, they'll go back to the other one again. You know, they're just, yep. just out of comfort, uh, you know, and, and what they think is going to get the job done. And, and they'll just be like, Hey, just don't do that thing you did last time or don't do this or don't do that. And uh, it's one of those deals where y- your constant contact has to be there enough that when somebody else quote unquote messes up or pisses them off or whatever, and they're frustrated and want something new, you're there. That, that right. the constant contact of your name, your address, your phone number is right there and accessible. And they're like, I'm going to give this a try. Well, and I, this actually falls into what Michael Conrad and I said, you know, you hit it right there. So say you did mess up, right. And they feel comfortable coming to you and letting you know, Hey, you know, this wasn't right. Or they're having some issues with their water heater. And then even if, you didn't do anything wrong. You can explain it to them. They're going to listen. They're going to be like, well, I, okay, I see your point of view, but if you did do something wrong, you're going to be able to talk to them about it and get it solved amicably. I used, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're able to get it solved and everybody's happy, you know? So it, it works both ways by staying present constantly. For sure. So uh, part of the follow-up what do you do uh, follow up phone calls after your home inspections? No, it was just emails. Okay. So you do um, emails? Yeah, fetching out through the emails and I integrated those in ISN. So it almost feels like I do nothing now, but I know those are going out. Right. Um, I found that the, 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 the phone calls for some reason, um, obviously time consuming, but um, I had, a, I had a lot of agents. So you just, you get them on the phone and you're just wanting to say thanks and this, that, and they're like, uh, and you just hear that, like, I, like I've got somebody else on the line. I'm busy. I'm tired. What, you really going to yeah. thank me for this? We're going to do it again next week. Like, yeah. Ugh. So I found I found a lot of them got frustrated with the follow up phone calls. I think something more in the form of an email and the card that you do. Yep. Is the card's more meaningful? It doesn't waste their time. They can look at it for as long as they want or not. 
they know it's there. They, they, they see a handwritten note. It's pretty, pretty good stuff. And, and then, uh, like you said, some of them save it and it's become a joke for them because they get yeah. so many of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the, and, the and, or, that had... and or, you know, just the fact that it's at the office they and see they it. open it, yep. either, either goes in the trash, but sometimes if they open it, it sits on their desk. People yep. are going to see it. Yep. You might have, you might get, you know, somebody to pick it up and go, Oh, that's really cool. And then be like, can I keep this and, or take it back to their desk and call you. So, yeah, so that, that falls right into it. Yep. So I agree with the phone call. You know, I don't, I actually don't do the phone calls too much, but this is where I'm going into with uh, newer home inspectors. Like if you are not doing something that day, there's a whole bunch of stuff you could be doing with your previous clients. You know, you, you call your agent, you know, just thank them for using you. That's the phone call, you know, or uh, ask them, you know, how, how did everything go? You know, just real quick and then boom off. You're not, you don't want it to be a long conversation maybe five minutes tops because they're busy. Right. You're just like, Hey, I was just called to say thank you, you know, for using Reckner home inspections. And that's probably trying- the biggest, biggest gold nugget nugget you probably could have thrown out Chris when you just said for all the, all the newer guys that are listening, if you think if, if you're on Facebook saying, I don't know how to market. Okay. I understand. Buy a book, watch some videos, listen to these podcasts, but you have to do what we're saying too. Action, <laughs> massive amounts of action, and just throwing yeah. things at the wall, like Chris always says. Doing something. If 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 you don't have an inspection that day, you're not. There, you're working. There are videos to be made. There is social media to be thrown out there. There is just start finding ideas and doing it and having fun promoting yourself for free on online all over the place. Right. Yeah. There, yeah. there's so much to do. There is no way you should ever be bored in this I business. Think- I think someone told me once he was like they're in a rural 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 area rural, <laughs> rural. rural, rural. <laughs> right. uh, yeah, out of the rural area and he, you know there's not too many home inspectors there's like two or three but there's like there's this one guy he was new and he said he was like man this guy's starting to kill me he's starting to you know sneak up on my business because he's even offering free pre-listing inspections and whatnot and I was like man that guy's I was like that's a pretty good idea and then, and then he was like he was like, what? I was like, I was like, he's hungry. You know, <laughs> and it, it, it's him doing a free inspection is better than doing nothing at all. You know, that's my opinion. So eventually you'll be able to charge. A yeah. pretty think think of it as a marketing day. If you're, if you're going to sit at home on your butt anyway, right. And you were going to maybe make a video or maybe think of something you wanted to send to some agents or do something or yeah. drop candy off in your truck and take all that time <laughs> to drive somewhere to drop off a bag of Hershey's uh consider doing a free home inspection for somebody yeah. not necessarily a a pre-listing one would be better mm-hmm. um because your name could be on their sign you could do all yeah. kinds of stuff yeah you could ask and be like yeah i'll do it for free just put a sign in your front yard you know something like that and or add me to the bottom of your sign as a hanger or something yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah, yeah so going on to the next one we went on a a circle there a little bit but we hit it a little bit too and some of the people they they're always they're like, you write letters? I'm like, yeah, everybody gets a letter. And I think letter writing is one of the reasons why that pushed us over that um, being always remembered type thing. It's just, is, it the, is it the exact, unless there was something memorable that happened at the inspection, do, is it the same exact thing every time? More is it, less, thanks for yeah. having us out, thanks for having us out, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, if you can since we're doing such high volume, it's hard to actually take something personable from the inspection. But man, if you could do that, that's even more gold. Be like, I, you know, you just say, I enjoyed that one. I like, you know, the windows on the front, you know, I don't know. It could be anything, but if you could take something from that inspection or you'd say that water heater was pretty funny, wasn't it? You know, (laughs) anything like that. If you could add that into the card, man, that would be gold. But ours is, they're, they're pretty standard. It's just like, you know, thank you, their name, you know, it was nice thank you for the, you know the business and then our cards in there or, or something like that so yeah it is pretty so, standard so they're all from isis <laughs> no <laughs> not all of them you know so the the meetings the meetings the face to face the classes those are all handwritten notes so uh, the, they're in there you know thank you for coming to our class or something like that but like the inspections oh unless we're targeting it targeting a specific area too so like Galveston we're having you know a lot of hard it's hard for us to drive up business in Galveston so each one gets a handwritten note and then the listing agent gets a handwritten note too 
you know, saying thanks for the smooth transaction, something like that. But the, um, but the, we do, it's 50-50 and then we have that automated service where we're able to drop in all their names and then they get, uh, it comes from a company, it's like a dollar a card or something like that. So yeah, they're, it just depends on how you go. So if it gets too crazy, there are services out there that can still do it, but you got to remember, it still has to be done no matter what, no matter your size. So you're like, well, I'm doing 2000. Well, if letter writing is the reason why you got up to 2000, you better keep doing that letter writing. You know, if you, if you're going to make them generic too, you could, you, your one of your marketing days could be, okay, I'm not going to write one every day. I'm going to write 500 of them today and put them in a pile. (laughs) That way you can, you can grab, go, send, grab, go, send. Yeah. And you can just have like a space for the name, (laughs) you know, just, Fill it, fill it out. And if I remember right, there is a service out there that'll handwrite everything for you. Yeah, that they are. They're they're like robots, but the handwriting looks like real. So that's what we, that's what we do. So um, going into the next one, and this is where I fail the most. I really should and like have a set number of houses that I do every weekend. But what do you think about hitting open houses? I've definitely done it. Um, I even put together open house survival bags, you know, with the the toilet paper and the <laughs> hand lotion and, you know, all that kind of like stuff. Like a and snack in there. I like, the I like alcohol, alcohol for their hands and stuff and that's a funny. Snickers bar and, you know, that's that, a good that one. Kind of I, I, I mean, it open house survival bag. Yeah. yeah. Like that. yeah. It is a, it is a form of torture, isn't it? Them sitting yeah. in that empty house for so yeah, long. For sure. Um, there's even been some, if, if I know they're a really big team or something like that, um, I've even gone so far as to, especially after Christmas, when I look for these, you'll see them at Office Max and stuff, the power banks to plug your phone into. Sometimes yeah. those can be super, super inexpensive and uh, give them a power bank that, uh, that's, that's charged. Free, free charged. They can, they can keep their phone charged without having to take a phone charger in the house. Yeah. Um, some things like that. But uh I've done them. I've never seen a huge return on them. Um, mm-hmm. I do think it's definitely a, a positive way to go out and say hi to somebody. You've got them trapped in a corner, literally in a corner. You know where they're going to be for a few hours, and they're going to be bored at some point, whether it's the beginning, middle, or end. And sometimes you have to – you can't – If they might have people there. So it's hit or miss as to whether how effective it can be at each one. If it's a slam busy – right now it seems to be every open house is slam busy here. Yeah, the market we have very low inventory in Ohio, and it is just one of the hot hot markets right now. Still, we're still in the top twenty. Yeah, so it's it's hard because sometimes they, they you know they want to see you, they don't mind talking to you, but sometimes they're just busy. Yeah, you just keep it quick, you know. So I think you know. Well, we have a. I don't, we're not. They're not really slammed a whole lot in our market. They, you know, some are busier than others, but you know, this is a long game strategy whenever you're hitting open houses that's not a 90 day strategy most agents that are in these open houses they're brand new you know brand brand new so where they fall in is this is like a six month or even a year strategy where you get them you get their information you said hi and then you grow together so this is why i really believe this falls into a new a new home inspector thing so it falls uh yeah, so I think open houses are great, but they're in and out. You know, you want to try to hit 10 or 5 in a day real quick, you know, so you still have your weekend. You can go in, hit them, just say hi, drop off the survival bag. I, you can honestly, it just goes off to like a bottled water and a snack and then just give them your card and then get their card and then you're done, you know. And just the toilet like, paper is always funny though, but. I, I think the toilet paper is actually really funny. I think that's re- could you imagine this would be really funny if you could figure out how to brand the sheets printed toilet paper absolutely <laughs> i was thinking the same thing so the, they're like this is genius and also disturbing <laughs> yeah for sure. that would, but if they ever needed that at a home inspection boy it's right there that would be something yeah yeah they're, they're like you branded the toilet. That would be really, really funny. I just found out one of my friends works for a caulking company, and he said I could get tubes of caulk with my brand on them for, <laughs> for the same price as regular caulking. That, oh, yeah. And I thought you, giving you a tube to of give, caulk away would yeah, be pretty interesting with my yeah, information on to, it. Yeah, to the agents or clients. I'd, I think it would be clients. more to your clients, not yeah, so much. the client-based one. 
But I just thought, huh, you know, you talk about caulking all the time, silicone, caulk, silicone, caulk. <laughs> you could have a tube of it and be like, this is the kind we really like you to use. And I'm telling you, dude. It would be interesting. I'm contacting China, and I'm going to figure out how to brand uh, toilet, toilet paper. paper. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's the wrapping, I don't care. It's, that's genius. That's yeah. genius. So Even if you put a sticker on the first piece that they have to tear off if they want to use it. Yeah. That'd be something. Yeah. <laughs> so the next uh, one uh, goes down to Google reviews, Yelp reviews. You yeah. know, I, I think this right here is gold and a lot of people underestimate it. You know, the, free, free gold. The fr free gold. Yeah. You know, you get up there and then at the end of your home inspection, it doesn't matter if you're new or older in the industry, you need to make sure that you're asking for a review at the very end. And I think Michael Marzian's strategy is I really haven't implemented it too much, but his strategy is like, he's like, Hey, can you do this? I mean, like he literally physically asks, uh, he's like, I did a really good job for you. Can you go out of your way and do this? I, I, I can't really remember his exact script. I remember listening to his podcast. Yeah. I got to go back and hear it again if I wanted to, to, to be able to nail it. But um, I do the same thing. I ask twice, mm. um, right when they're, um, it's, if, if I ever hear at any time during the inspection or walkthrough, oh my God, you've done an amazing job, or you've done this, or you've done that, or, you know, oh, I'm going to tell my agent how great a job you did. I immediately ask for the Google review right then and there. Right. And then after I give them the now that you've had a home inspection book that we pass out with every inspection, mm -hmm. um, it has my card on it. And then it asks for a Google review. I asked for the Google review then, but I'm also going to start putting in a, and I'm going to pr probably print them up myself, just make them up something simple. It's a half a page sheet that I'm going to stick inside the book um, that asks them to go do the Google review as well. Oh, that, that's a good idea. Yeah. So Google reviews are where it's at. It helps with the analytics. It pushes your page up even further. People trust your business more, especially if they seem real, if they're dropping your name in them and whatnot. Yeah. And then how many, it, how many, how many are you guys sitting at? I'm sure everybody's curious as to where well, we're at. We have, I actually have four different locations on it. So I think uh, that's really important. So like after you hit a few hundred, I think it's important to open up another location somewhere else in your yeah. area. So we have, 400 ish sitting on our main one. Then I have 130 in Galveston. I have 90 in uh, like Cypress area and then, or 130 in Cypress area and then 90 ish in like the Woodlands area. So I have a bunch spread out across. There's an inspection company out here that they have like a thousand or so <laughs> on one area. And I think once you hit like a certain level, uh, it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't, yeah, ma sure. it doesn't matter anymore. And then after a while, it just, it seems like unreasonable. You're like a thousand reviews, you know, that's like, yeah. A, so I like, had at one point I had, I have 193 five star reviews now on Google and two one star reviews that are buried. So yeah. that's the other thing. The more five star reviews you get, if somebody like in my one star reviews, the two one star, and I don't have anything else, all fives and these two ones. Um, the two ones were actually from sellers who didn't like the things that I found, did you which respond? is totally unfair. Yeah. Huh? Did you, re did you respond? Yeah, absolutely. And okay. the response has gotten me more business than it, than it's deterred anyone. They, they, they go to the one star reviews cause they want to see, Oh, what was the right. issue? This guy's got so many five star reviews. They, they, they're so curious. They go to the one star review, they read it. The guy says, you know, I, my house was for sale. He said all these things were wrong. They weren't. And then in my response, it was kind of like yours. It's like, sir, sorry that you feel this way about the other things that we found wrong in your home. But, you know, this is what we had wrong. And this house just happened to not be for my client. The next house they found was perfect for them. Sorry, it wasn't yours, but you ended up selling your house for more money later on. So I'm not sure why you're mad at us now, <laughs> but, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and people said they love the responses. So, yeah. and that's, and that's half, half the reason they chose us because we stood up for ourselves and we, we said, Hey, we found issues at your house. Right. It's not true. It's not nice for you to say that we didn't and that, that we're, you know, doing something wrong. Obviously we have 200 other five-star reviews that says we do things the right way and we yeah. find issues at homes and we don't, we, you know, we work for our clients. And then people have told me numerous times we hired you for, because of your one-star reviews. Okay. Yeah. So the... <clears throat> Leading into that is, I was reading this book. It's called Hug Your Haters 
right now. I'm not, I'm not very far into it, but <laughs> it, it says no response is still a response. It just shows that you, you don't care, you know? So you need to make sure that you really respond to all these reviews. And the best way to respond is not going out there defending yourself. You say, I'm sorry, you feel this way. You know, if you have, I, we, and you could even say, I think I said it's it's our job to find things that are wrong. Yeah. And people don't like things being, that's why you're not supposed to be at your home inspections. That's why, you know, because people don't want to hear bad things. Yeah. We're sorry you didn't like the fact that there was things wrong with your house, but everyone's right. house has things wrong with them and it's our job to find them. And you can't be mad at us for doing our job. Right. And then you always want to leave your phone number and email address or either, or, you know, and I think I, that's how I started responding most recently. It was just like, not that we get them that often, but my most recent one was like, please reach out to us. This isn't how we do business. Uh, you know, here's my personal phone number. We could take care of this for you. You know, they don't ever call. It's just, but it just matters of how the message is read, right? Like people sure. read that one star review and they're like, wow, even the owner left his personal phone number on here to try to solve this issue. They don't want issues just sitting there. So that's, uh, that's really important. So moving on to the next one. And then I think we're at the hour mark. I really need a, a timer. There's no timer somewhere on here. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even remember when we started at this point. Yeah. I want to talk about home advisor a little bit, you know, home advisor. I'm not a fan at all. I think it's like, I, I, I don't know if I could be any help on this topic. I, I'm okay. such not a fan. I don't even, uh, I, yeah. I don't do anything. Okay. So I'm blocked. If, if people don't know what home advisor is, home advisor is a service where you pay for leads, you pay for the lead and it's not even guaranteed that you're going to get the job. And the way that you, the people that are normally on home advisor, they're, they're, they're price shoppers, right? So they're, they're trying to get the cheapest product they can. So if you want to win home advisor, that's great. You're going to end up being doing like $250 inspections or $300 inspections. Some people yeah. might not agree about this, but the way it works is they'll send out a lead and they'll send it to like 10 home inspectors or, you know, however many home inspectors. And the first are. one to respond, it's like a race. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, and then also it's if, expensive if it's a price too. shopper, they still charge you for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I've still, heard, I've heard that, you know, I've heard of guys over the years that, and in my same personal experience was, I want to say the the one week that I dealt with them, um, I didn't get anything from it. It was like seven price shoppers. They charged me. I don't even remember what it was now. Thirteen dollars a lead. Ten fifteen dollars, yeah, something yeah. like that for it. And uh, I'm, and I had to call in every single time and be like, "Hey, this person was." You have to physically say they are price shopping, yeah. and they'll say, "Okay, we'll take it off your bill." But you had to call in every single time. It became an instant headache, and I just right. like, "Nope, I'm done." And, right. and that's what I try to tell everybody is on the forums is run away. All right. So yeah, if you're paying for leads, right? So this is how it goes to me. And you can spawn, this goes back to sponsoring a team meeting. This is exactly the same concept, but just in scale and targeted more to the audience that are preaching to your audience is $13 a lead. So say you can sponsor a breakfast. Breakfasts are my favorite because it's the cheapest. And also they're fresh, the, the most fresh at that point in time. They're not bogged down in something, but you could $13 a lead, say it's 50 leads, you know, that's one breakfast. You could turn around, sponsor the breakfast, then you have all their contact details and then you follow up with them forever. It's a forever follow-up uh, campaign. It's always in the follow-up. This $13 a lead, say you land the job, you have to pay for all the other leads that you didn't get. And then you turn around and you're, you're in the hole and then you have to just do the home inspection to get out of the hole, hoping that you're going to get out of you know there are some people that say it work and the only way that i think that it can work is if you're in a rural area but if you take any of the marketing strategies that i'm doing right now it actually works out you know it comes it comes out to being the same Market price really it's really free if you yeah. if it besides besides paying for for meetings and putting some money into some little teeny trinkets giveaways highlighters pens that kind of stuff um, letters letter the, writing the major the major marketing really is is free these days on social media you just yeah. have to put forth a lot of effort you have to and not scale. be scared of the camera you've got to stop being 
stop being shy of anything and just mm -hmm. put yourself out there and just start going because it gets right. easier. Yep. Yep. And so I don't recommend home advisor. It's crazy expensive. And the one reason why a home inspector works for us is because home advisor, home advisor actually bankrupt him. He was spending like hundreds of dollars on them and then you'd get maybe five jobs or so out of it. But then he broke even and he still had bills, you know? <laughs> he right. had, so I don't, I don't recommend it. Some people might have success stories on it working, but it's not a long-term goal. You know, the only way that you're going to stay in business for a very long time is relationship style business. Not, not this, I, I pay for this and get business. And if you want, you can maybe use it for a Kickstarter, maybe, but you need to make sure you have a follow-up campaign for those people that were involved in those transactions. But even agents, like there's specific agents out there that want this forever, they want relationships too. And it, Home Advisor removes that relationship out of the business. And yeah. you want relationships with the clients the agents, you know, everyone involved, title companies, lenders, by having this relationship, it's a lot easier to work with. Before we get to the next one, you just said, we've mentioned a couple different times, lenders and uh, title agencies and stuff. Mm -hmm. Guys, make sure on Facebook that when you're looking for the people you may know section and clicking on agents, click on lenders and title people. Mm -hmm. They have foul. They're they're just them friend requesting you or, be, or accepting your request will open up hundreds of other agents and Doors, because yeah. that's all they deal with. So title agent that's a that's a golden nugget, guys. Write it down. Facebook yeah. the friends is not just the realtors. Right. Title agencies and lenders because they do nothing but deal with with agents. And so if you do that, then all of a sudden your your who who you know or who you should know thing explodes and you've got tons of agents to click on there as well and uh the final one of course is social media you know that's the last one that i have right here good and, what a <laughs> good lead in yeah good in, yeah good lead in and social media is where it's at man like uh i think as soon as i three years ago i started doing social media like really really heavy and of course like you can go back three years ago on my videos and they do suck but guess what i still posted them anyways and the only way to get better is to do it every day and take pictures every day, post every day, drop your, and our strategy is we do one in the morning and one in the evening, you know, one at the start of the work day and then one at the end of the work day. And then a really good strategy too that we found out is if you tag, you take a picture of the front of the home or something and say, thank you for the referral and you tag the agent and the client if possible, you know, thanks for using the business. And they, you show up on their timelines too as well. So right. you want to narrow this social media stuff down and uh, implement it. And you don't even have to be good at it. Just start <laughs> and yeah. it'll eventually. And always, always try to use either the, I mean, if you're taking a picture of the house, if anybody gives you any crap about it, because a lot of agents get all panicked. Oh, you can't put things online. Um, you just say, this is, this is the same photo on MLS. It's, it's public picture. The house yeah. is for sale. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, so don't let agents overrun you with the fear mongering stuff about taking photos and stuff. If you're zoomed in close enough on whatever topic you're talking about and you can't see where you are and you haven't mentioned any names or given out any addresses, you're fine. All right. Yeah. And I, no problem. this falls into it too. I actually talked to two separate lawyers and both of them came back. There's actually no judgment on it yet. So no one's been sued and no one's been proven right or wrong. So the way there it's not against the law at all so you can be no. in a home and talking about it like steve reckner just said you want to make sure that they can't tell where you're at you don't uh drop any names and you talk about this specific problem and then what i found yeah. out is just be professional about it you know don't yeah don't be don't crazy make and then make don't make make sure there's no the, the seller's family photos and stuff aren't in your right. background. Not, not, nothing like that. You shouldn't be able to tell where you are at all. Yeah. You should be, you should see a furnace. You should see a, a, right. a, a, a so close up on a window that you can see the caulking problem and that, you know, that kind of stuff. So, right. Yeah. If they can't tell where you're at, you're safe. You're safe. And they they're, they, they have no grounds. No lawyer will ever pick it up to come after you because then they have to prove that you, uh, you cause damages. Right. And then that, 
that's going to be like impossible to do, <laughs> especially if they still sell their home. So yeah, don't don't take a picture of somebody's Ferrari in their in their garage <laughs> or pose with it or something. Yeah, there's, uh, there's something that's going to cause you know people to want to rob a home or something like that. You always want to just stick stick to what we do. Yeah, and I got this uh, that advice from Ruben, and I I probably didn't seem like I accepted it at the time. You told me two years ago, but I had this one video where it was like you know a million dollar problems or million dollar home and you could tell where I was at I mean like this home is in the background and in, and it's very unique in the south area people know that home and so I was walking around talking about all the stuff wrong with it and Ruben's like hey man and I was like I, I probably like kind of brushed it off a little bit but I was like you know what that makes a lot of sense and <laughs> I stopped I stopped doing it literally the next day so thank you Ruben if you listen to this all the way to the end so yeah, keep them, keep it generic. Yeah. So keep it generic. Keep it. Don't keep the house in the background. Don't say where you're at and then you're safe and then post as much content as you possibly can. Until, yeah, until so that's, it. that's a perfect lead into always telling people like, you can't just do this for a minute. You can't just do it for this week or two weeks or one month. This needs to be something you implement as your life of what you're doing. If you're at a home and you find something unique and there's nobody around, you can make a quick video, do it. Yeah. If you're don't have an inspection in the morning and the weather's okay or even if the weather's not okay you can go inside your own house and find something to talk about to make a video about yesterday i posted a video because i found a hole in the roof in the attic awesome pulled out the phone i'm by myself nobody else is up there to bug me boom made it made it i was on the roof the other day the vent was destroyed it was a good video i made it yeah. you know and you just make these simple videos you don't have to have our our like my camera set up this tripod and everything that i've got going on no, in light. get your phone if man. you can great if you can't just do it the authenticity yeah. is what they love be an go, authority go know live. what you're talking about yeah, yeah go, sure. go live live actually gives you the most traction on i need uh, to do that so bad i i've, <laughs> I've told myself a thousand times just go live i should have done it in the attic the other day yeah. or even when you're in the crawl space that one day if you're live in the crawl space and you're just talking you know, live gets really good. Live traffic. from the crawl space. Yeah, live from the crawl space and dealing with spiders and stuff. Yeah. Right. All right. So this goes into my strategy for if you're new. I had to, I wrote this one down just to make sure that I don't mess it up because it, it also falls in a massive amount of action. So there's not all of these things that we talked about do work. It's just, you have to be doing them every day. You know, it's just not going to be one thing so someone always asks you're like what's the one thing that's changed your business and not one thing there's there, there it's not it's not not one thing it's it's a little bit of everything right it's, everything uh comes into play of it working out so and then we see people on facebook all the time that say um you know hey guys i don't know what's wrong i can't get business this that and the other and then some of us me chris and you know ruben some of the other ones will start saying well are you doing this and, and we don't just say, are you doing this one thing? We say, are you doing these 20 things? Yeah, are you and doing social they'll media? they'll be like, no, by. or I do, I do one of those. Well, you need to do the other 19. You need to do everything all the yeah. time, 100%. Yep, yep. So if you're not working, you're working, and you need to go outside and figure it out. And even if it's just like posting social media videos, you know, or and like you said, on your own house, you, you didn't have a job one day and then you showed, I, I still like it. I know I talked about it before, but it, it falls into um, the, it falls into, a, you, you fixed your garage door opener and you yeah. did a video on it and then you were wearing your hat or something like that, the rector inspection services. So that, that's like really, really important. So uh, going into the strategy, so this is what I want you to do if you're new and you have no business at all and it's going to work in this. And I still have agents that use me today, seven years later from whenever I first started this strategy is I want you to hit 10 open houses. You're going to get, and it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can do what Steve Reckner said, toilet paper, or you can get a, a water bottle and you know, cookies or power bar. I wouldn't recommend power bars. Those are disgusting. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> um, Snickers, candy, chocolate. Hershey, uh, a solid chocolate Hershey bar is the simplest, best one. Yeah, and then give them your card. Make sure you get their card. That's not, that is the most important item, right? And then I want you to, as soon as you get home, I want you to send them an email and I want you to say, 
hey, it was great meeting you. Thanks. Uh, you know, nice chat. Take notes on what y'all talked about. You know, I don't even care if you walked around the home, you know, don't be in there too long, you know, and then let them talk to their clients. If the client shows up, it's your exit. You know, it was nice meeting you. You know, you got their card, you leave, you send them an email. It was great meeting you. Then you figure out where their office is. You write them a handwritten note the same time because it's going to take two or three days to get to them. The email's instant. Then it'll take two or three days for the, the note to get to them. And then I want two weeks later, I want you to invite them to a cup of coffee. So just say, hey, you know, just, and most of them are going to say yes because they saw you face to face. They got the email, they got the letter, and then you invite them to coffee and boom, you now have a client for life. It's, it's guaranteed. And then they're in your social media campaigns and your email campaign now. You're, you're set up. You're good. And get some thick skin. Don't oh, get yeah. butt hurt. Don't get butt hurt when the agent's like, I'm too busy. I don't want to meet with you. Okay. Well, then that's not the one you wanted anyway. Well, if and, they're not the one that wants to build a lifetime relationship with you, then don't worry about it. And, honestly. And, I probably say the one thing before we're done that I don't forget, do not think that any realtor is going to be with you forever. Oh, it's, yeah. it's one, <laughs> do not base your business on realtor referrals only. You right. should be going after clients any way possible. The agents referring you is icing on top of the cake. That should be second to how you think you're going to build your business. A lot of people will argue and say, oh, no, I get all my agent referrals. Okay, well good but other people you can build a business and not have to have the worry because i have agents all the time that i mean this december was a perfect example they checked out they were in florida they were doing christmas stuff they had made all their money we were, our, our market was really hot in the summer and they just checked out and right. so you you need to be having a fresh flow of agents at all times do not get comfortable I always tell Chris he hasn't read this book, but he reads a lot of books and he needs to, but who moved my cheese? I always tell him that because people get too complacent and you think you're going to get your business from these agents forever. And then some agents after their first three years of hustle, they turn into listing agents. They don't want to run around with buyers and you constantly need the new, fresh, younger agents that are constantly working with buyers. Right. And one thing you said at the beginning of that, you know, about having thick skin, it's, uh, it's not it's not about the actual copy. It's about the invite. So it's the fact that you invited them. So if they don't show up, it doesn't matter. It's, it's about, it's about the invite. So, uh, and it's okay for them to say no, and you're going to be told no a lot. A lot. Yeah. There a was a lot one, more than you're going to get. Yeses, guys. Yeah. One out of 10 would be a success rate. Yeah, yeah that is true. It was funny. One out uh, of 10. One person asked me like, well, you called into how many offices to sponsor breakfasts? It was a phone call I had, I think about two years ago, I think. And it was like, he was like, I was like, I think I called 50 the other day. And he's like, well, how many said yes? It was like four, four or five, four maybe. Yeah, sure. and, and, then, and then he was like, he was like, so you had 46 no's. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's just part of it, man. <laughs> just remember that a hall of fame hitter 300 gets you in the hall of fame three out of 10 times hitting that little baseball gets you in the hall of fame right three out of 10 so our marketing wise one out of 10 is is, is you guys have to remember one out of 10 times is a success because yeah. if you build that client right then they're with you for a long time and i like how you said too it's not you know a lot of these strategies are marketing agents and that is a major flow but you know the google reviews hitting up your old clients, staying present in front of your old clients through your email campaigns with them, reminding them to change their filters or something like that. You know, that, that is a part of it too. So it's not just agents, it's clients. And then I think uh, an inspector that I met before, his name's uh, Sheehan. If you uh, know who he is, he runs Blip. He told me that the first three years of his business or something, he didn't even step into one office. So it's completely possible to start a home inspection business, run it, market it properly through Google, Yelp, um, just through knowing people to be successful too. And he's a multi-inspector firm. So yeah. And I really didn't, I didn't go to a lot of open houses or visit any offices in the first three, the first five years I'd say. And I, I didn't have any issues, but when I wanted to get to a, a, another level, then I implemented that. I could have done it in the beginning, but I didn't. Right. Um, so it's very possible. 
Yeah, so it's definitely possible. All right, so we're going to wrap it up there. Y'all already know how to find Steve Reckner. I'm pretty sure we're way over the hour mark. <laughs> I, need, I need a timer. Uh, but that's it. Uh, that's a kind of a breakdown of some of the marketing. Of course, there's thousands of other ways to market, but I, I think those are some pretty good hot topics. We could, we could go down rabbit holes in many directions with this. <laughs> You know, your uniform, what you do when you're at the inspection, oh, the branding. Show, all that stuff. Yeah, the branding. Yeah, it's never ending. It's never ending. Yeah. I think we've started something I, online with that, the dough show. I like how you call it the dough show. It The line is actually trademarked. You don't get the dough unless you put on the show. And then y'all right, right. <laughs> turned around and you're all like, called it the dough show. I'm like, that's actually kind of funny. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> So we're going to wrap it up there. So that's it. That's the Home Inspection Whisper show. Uh, please visit our website and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Thanks, guys. Take it Always easy. Always be marketing. Yeah, never stop. Bye. See ya.